jockeys are given their instructions to go into the mounting yard and it was a very busy scene indeed as the horses paraded around the yard prior to mounting up to go onto the track for the parade. Number 20 there was Choctaw. And so the boys are given their orders to mount for the Melbourne Cup. There we see Mac in the foreground, Regal Wench on the left. There's Regal Wench again as the horses commence the parade. And at the head of the parade was Baystone. He was followed by Ark Royal, Sir Blink, Yeaman, MacDougall, Chicola, Mac, Royal Jester, Valerius, Malfast, Grand Gary, Fox Mara, White Hills, Milano, Amanala, Trellios, or Tule, Regal Wench, Moonbridge, Travel Boy. And they're off with Nethergold near the inside first to move from Yeaman Baystone, Contador on the outside going fast. Chocola got away well and Mac is taking up a handy position next and he's followed further out by Royal Jester who began well. And uh, just in behind him was Belfast coming down the centre. Travel Boy showing a lot of speed but he's still wide out on the track and Trellios is uh, following him. Coming in behind him then was Secret Way and Regal Wench is on the extreme outside of the field and already Amanala's dropped back to nearer the rear of the field with Belfast last. As they race to the two furlongs post the first time, it's Nethergold the pacemaker showing the way from Coriolis on the outside. Then follows Trellios going up into third position, Regal Wench behind him, Contador on the rails with Royal Jester. And just in behind them came Milano, Summer Honeymoon and Mac Grand Gary parked on the fence. Secret way, Mac Dougal next, followed by Orchul, Sir Akron, White Hills and Choctaw. Next was Valeria, Sir Blinkwell back in the field with Baystone, Grand Scott. Then came Summer Honeymoon, Fox Mara, Moonbridge and Yeaman on the inside, followed by Ark Royal. And the uh, last two was Belfast and Damanella. As they take the turn out of the straight past the mile and three and Trellios has taken over. Trellios the leader as they turn out of the straight now with about a mile and a quarter to go from Travel Boy moving up into second position. Nethergold on the rails. There goes Milano and Summer Honeymoon around them at a great rate on the outside. Followed then by Royal Jester and they were followed by Secret Way on the outside of Grand Gary Chocola. Then came Valerius White Hills and Orchul, Sir Akron, Mac Dougal and Mac was next. Baystone, Grand Scott, Sir Blink on the outside of him. Yeaman on the fence followed by Fox Mara, Ark Royal and Moonbridge. Then follows Amanala and Belfast was last. With half the business over, there's a mile to go in the Melbourne Cup and Trellios has been headed by Summer Honeymoon on the outside. Travelled boy Royal Jester Handy, Corialis on the inside rail. Contador and Grand Gary going up on the outside. Nethergold was next with White Hills just in behind him. About a length further away to MacDougall, followed then by Ortjul and Grand Scott on the outside of him. A length and a half further away then on the outside was Fox Marta moving up on the outside of Baystone. Chicola was just in behind them and they were followed by Ark Royal on the rails and Belfast was still last. As they raced over now past the six furlongs post and uh, here we see Summer Honeymoon on the outside has uh, just got ahead in front of Trellios. They're closely followed then by Regal Wench moving up nicely with Valerius and Royal Jesters there. Grand Gary on the fence with Contador on the outside of him. There goes Mac making a run around the outside and he's followed then about a length and a half further away by White Hills and Sir Akron Chocola. Then about a length and a half farther away was Orchul on the outside of Nethergold and Fox Mara going around them on the outside. They were followed by Yeaman on the fence and further back on the inside of him was Grand Scott and back near the rear of the field now is Summer Honeymoon dropping out of it with Amanala. On the home turn now with three furlongs to go in the cup race and a great race for the lead seats. Travel Boy going up on the outside a challenge with Sir Akron and Trellios on the rails a great race. Royal Jester just in behind them. Settling for the run now with two furlongs. Trellios has dashed to the front. From Travel Boy going out after him, Sir Akron on the outside, Royal Jester Choctaw, then follows Valerius over on the outside of them, and Grand Gary is making a great run. As they race in now towards the furlong post, the whips are out. Trellios just the leader from Travel Boy, and there goes MacDougall up on the outside to challenge, and MacDougall hits the front with about 50 or 60 yards to go. MacDougall, Nethergold coming into the picture, White Hills and Trellios, but MacDougall wins the cup from Nethergold and White Hills. Next was Grand Gary, Trellios and Sir Blink, followed by Travel Boy and Yeaman. Next was Grand Scott, Moonbridge, Valerius. Here we see the horses returning to scale after the running of the cup. Clark of the course, Jim McGaffin, leading in the winner, MacDougall, with South Australian jockey Pat Glennon in the saddle. It was Pat Glennon's second Melbourne Cup victory. He was previously successful on Comic Court. And here we see the owner, Mr R. N. Brown, leading MacDougall back into the winner's stall.
There he is, MacDougall. Very proud owner, holding him and here Pat Glennon unsaddles to go to scale to weigh in. MacDougall by Marco Polo II. His Excellency, the Governor-General of Australia, Sir William Slim, presented the trophy to Mr Brown. Mr Brown holds the cup and the champion horse. And now we see the finish of the cup in slow motion. As they race down with about a furlong to go, it's Trellios in front of Travel Boy on the outside of him, and there goes MacDougall up with his fine run to take the lead. There we see MacDougall striding out and leaving the opposition to go on and score by three lengths in the cup race from Nethergold along the inside rail who finished reasonably well and White Hills on the outside. That's the order as they go to the post with MacDougall striding away from them to take the big money. Quite rightly so, Pat Glennon is a very happy man. And now here's Ray McDonald talking to the winning trainer, Dick Roden. Well, Dick, congratulations on training the Melbourne Cup winner. You've now joined that very select band of trainers, having Thanks very much, Ray. a Melbourne Cup winner under your belt. Yes. Well, now, before the race, uh, what did you think of your chances in the Cup? Well, look, I, I gave this horse an excellent chance, and I, I never get carried away in racing because I know uh, so many things can happen, but this horse was very fit, and I knew he was a, a tested two-miler, and uh, I, I knew that he'd be very hard to beat. Did you have any doubts at all during the running of the grueling two-mile event? No, I, I watched every step he took from the time he left the boxes, and, and uh, Pat Glennon has to be commended on the way he handled the horse. He rode a beautiful race. He got him over onto the fence, and he kept him there, and, and he waited and waited, and we had planned, uh, like, for the horse to have about a furlong and a half run at the finish. And when I saw him loom up there with about a furlong and a half, I knew that he'd sustain his run right to the line. How long have you had him, Dick? I've had him for over two years now. And uh, when did you feel that you had a Melbourne Cup winner in the stable? Well, after he won the Brisbane Cup, I knew that he'd make a vast improvement on that. And uh, when I saw the weights and saw that he, he wasn't partially weighted, I, I, was, I was confident then. And, but when he won the Metropolitan, he was given the penalty. I, I, I did have a bit of a doubt but the horse has worked so well that he sort of actually got me in to think that he had a, a, an excellent chance of winning today. Dick, anything special about his preparation for the big race? No, well, he's a, he's a delicate sort of a horse, or he has been. He's become more robust of late, but uh, I've never hustled him. I've always spaced his runs well, and, and uh, he's, uh, we've got the fruits of, uh, of that now. And what did you consider the greatest danger before the barrier went up? Well, the horse I thought would be the hardest to beat was Grand Gary, actually because uh, we'd only beat him, beaten him a nose in, in the Brisbane Cup, and uh, he, he beat us a neck the other day in the Hotham. Although I knew my horse was underdone there in the Hotham, and I knew that he, he'd improved vastly, and I knew that the other horse couldn't improve on what he did on Saturday. So I, I thought that he, like he, he is a dyed-in-the-wall stayer too, Grand Gary, and he was the horse that I was most afraid of. Barrier, quite happy with the barrier position? Yes, well, uh, uh, Glennon and I discussed it before the race, and we both thought that, uh, that he'd be better off there, actually, being not a fast beginner, that he sort of might get slammed off from the other horses coming across, you know, like. And, Quite so. Yeah. And what about this, the rider now? Would anything uh, make you select Glennon uh, for the mount? Well, uh, Glennon is a first-class horseman, as you know. He, he knows his way around uh, the, the Flemington course, and that was the biggest factor, I think. And besides, uh, he never had to carry much dead, dead weight, see. Well, this film, in addition to being shown in Melbourne, is going immediately to Brisbane and Sydney. You came from uh, Brisbane to Sydney, didn't you, Dick? Yes, I came from Brisbane. Well, I'm sure that all your friends and uh, followers in those two states will be very, very happy and proud uh, that you have brought in the winner. Good. Thank you very much, Ryan. Thanks again, Dick.